Okay, hi everyone. <clears throat> Let's uh, start the class in a minute. Okay, let's start the class, guys. I'll share my screen. Give me one minute. Okay, they've changed this thing. Uh, is the chat not expanding? Oh, no, I'm able to change the chat. <clears throat> guys, can you type something? Just send some message. I'm trying to see if I'm going to get in a small window or big window. Oh, nice. Cool. Like this. Nice, nice. Okay, Ishwar, sure. uh, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Ishwar sure is getting very. Huh. Uh, Prakash, yes, I'm feeling much better now. Thanks for asking. I'm, like, I'm still, <clears throat> I'm just recovering a little bit. Uh, basically, there's been uh, like a cold and fever wave happening in Hyderabad and Bangalore, as far as I can tell. And I've, I've been hit like last week. <clears throat> I'm still like recovering from it, but I thought I'm feeling a little better, so I'll take the class today. So anyway, uh, we'll start off the class. Give me one second. I'll start sharing my screen. <clears throat> yeah, sort of. You're right. Uh, viral fever is going on. Okay. So let's uh, <clears throat> let's tackle an important. Uh, interview topic again is also an important topic in JavaScript in general, which is regarding the event loop. So let me open up Excalibur as usual. So let's start talking about this topic called the event loop, which is one of the most important and asked interview questions as well. It's pretty simple to understand though. It doesn't take, uh, it's not that complex, honestly. Now we discussed about JavaScript being single threaded language. Okay. It's also a synchronous programming language, right? So we all discussed about what this both means. So basically a single threaded programming language means that there's only one call stack and JavaScript can only do one thing at a time. It can't do more than one thing at the same exact time. Right? So the JavaScript itself, a JavaScript engine can only handle one task at a time. That's very important to understand. Okay, that is the basic uh, meaning of being single threaded. Okay, and my synchronous is simply mean that <clears throat> whatever code you write, it's going to be executed in that specific order, one after the other. Okay, so only after the previous task is finished, we move on to the next task. Okay, that's what the synchronous task means. But if we uh, if we think about these both things, if uh, <clears throat> It might seem like JavaScript engine is very limiting, right? Because let's say that, uh, <clears throat> do you guys know what APIs are? <clears throat> Has that been covered in Java? Okay, no, right? Okay. So basically, uh, let's talk about <clears throat> when you create a website, right? whatever code you write using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that's basically, it basically forms the front end of the application. Okay. The front end basically is your website, which ultimately shows all the UI. Okay. If you go to a website like apple.com, okay. And whatever, <clears throat> see, all every website is ultimately created using HTML, CSS, uh, and JavaScript. Now, out of these three also, like we already know that the HTML and CSS and JavaScript, these three are what we need for every website, right? But the thing is, we don't even need CSS or JavaScript. Like these both are actually not mandatory at all. Okay, this thing is the only mandatory, uh, only mandatory language to create the website ultimately. Which means that if you want to ultimately create a website and host it online, you can do so with just using HTML. But obviously using HTML, we cannot add all the styles and animations that we want, right? We can't make our website look very pretty. Okay. That is where CSS comes in. CSS basically helps, uh, <clears throat> basically helps to make our websites very pretty looking. 
okay the fact that you want uh, the fact that you want the layout like this you want uh, color of black here with a white color button white color links so all of these things so basically in the fact that you want all of these things they're part of the css okay so using css uh, you'll be able to create a better looking website but <clears throat> just by having i'm sorry just by having the html and css it's not really enough to create your entire website because uh, when you actually want to guys what is happening what are you typing Nitin Chaitanya Rohit Kamaruddin, what is that? Guys, what is that? No, I want to know what that is. Chaitanya Rohit, Nitin, and Kamaruddin, I'm asking you guys, what is happening? How can everybody miss up at the same time? Okay, cool. <clears throat> what I was saying is using CSS is just not enough to create a website these days because you also want to add interactive to the website ultimately, right? So you want your websites to come alive. <clears throat> Let's say things like if you want to click on a button, you want to continue over, or if you click on this link here, you want to go to some other website, some other link, some other page of the same. So when you want to add a lot of behavior within your site, you ultimately reach out to JavaScript as well. Okay. And that is how ultimately we create a website. So all of these three things, they create what we call as the front end of the website. Okay. We call it the front end because ultimately Joby Dikare Amlo to the users on the websites, all of these things. जो भी UI है, जो भी colors है, जो भी जो भी interaction हो रहा है यहाँ पर, all that is part of the front end of the website, okay? This front end is basically it will run these three things only, ठीक है? There is no other things it can actually handle, which means that on the front end there is no replacement for HTML, CSS or JavaScript, okay? That is the great thing about being a front end developer, guys. So if you're a front end if you want to become a front-end developer, and all you need to know is just these three things and nothing else, okay? But when it comes to back-end, you might have uh, you guys might have heard what back-end is. So back-end is basically uh, you have a server, right? Ultimately, now whenever whenever the front-end needs any data from a database. It needs to request that resource. It needs to request that data from the backend. So basically, backend is all about uh, whatever programming language runs on a server. Okay. See all these programming languages right here. They run on the browser, right? Like a HTML, CSS, or JavaScript. All of them. They actually run on your browser itself, on your client. Okay. We call this as a client, basically. But there are programming languages, and there are many of them which actually run on the server. Okay, a server is nothing but a big, a big set of computers uh, whose main responsibility is to listen to the request and give some response. Okay, if you take a simple example of let's say Amazon dot in or Flipkart dot com. All the UI you're currently seeing, that's made using the front-end technologies, which is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, the fact that when you click on this, you're taken to a certain page. All of those things are um, they are basically dealt by JavaScript only. Okay, that's part of the front-end technologies. But where are you getting this list of data from? Okay, if I log into this website. Uh, how does 
my website know if i am if i'm given the current credentials or not okay so all of these things are basically handled by the back end so uh, in the back end you basically have one programming language and you have a database okay of course the back end can use multiple languages and multiple databases but for simplicity's sake let's think that uh, we have one programming language on the back end with one database now what basically happens is when you reach this website okay we make a request to the back end the request might be to let's say key water or the categories that we need to show on the front end okay so from the front end we make a request to the back end request in them what to show here on this header right here now this data we do not store on the front end guys because this data can change every single month every single week every single day also okay this data is not static it's not the same all the time right okay uh, <clears throat> sometimes the names might differ and sometimes we might not even have a particular category anymore okay isliye we store all this data within our database here okay so from the front end we make a request to the back end and the back end will listen to the request in this language will get whatever data you want and will respond back with a response you which means that basically once the front end will ask for the list of these items to the back end the back end will listen to the request and will respond back with whatever uh, whatever is the correct set of answers okay so one more example can be that if i'm searching for something like iphone 13 mini for example okay whatever i'm searching for i send this as a request to the back end okay in the back end itself has a programming language which will look at this search query this is the search query by the way like i'm searching for iphone 13 mini so th this language will query the database so database may uh, whatever are the results which come up for iphone 13 all of them will be collected and they'll be sent <clears throat> back to the front end so the front end will receive uh, this thing basically and the front end will receive this list of results <coughs> i'm sorry okay, so that is what happens with the front end and back end now i've told you at a very high level uh, how it works you guys anyway have a back end ka separate course only uh wahan par ha to wahan par they explain you in detail what is the back end language what is the database uh etc theek hai so isliye i don't want to go in much detail no? but just at a, at a very high level understand that the front end will always keep making request to the back end theek hai and the front end can request anything and the back end finds the correct uh, results based on that request it'll send back those results if there are no results for that there are no results uh, being sent for example has so akshit uh, regarding that i'll talk about it later because that's a little more complex again and there is something called as node js which we can use on the back end as well but uh, what happened was in the very beginning when javascript was created right when this was created in the first place many 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 years ago the creator of javascript only wanted javascript to be used within the browsers only okay which means that javascript jab banaya gaya tha it was created to be used only in the front end space theek okay? hai like only within the browser and nowhere else but right now in the javascript ecosystem has grown so much there are so many tools available which actually help us use javascript outside the browser also including the back end theek okay? hai and that is what you guys will be learning as well you guys actually have node js uh, in the back end thing so that is all what node js basically so node js helps you work on the back end and interact with the database and and interact with the with the front end as well but all of that you can do using just javascript okay 
that is the beauty of node js but yeah coming back here and now <clears throat> you make these request to the backend using what we call as apis okay an api is nothing but it's like a medium it's like it's like the middleman basically okay the api stands in between <clears throat> now the front end and the back end so through api you make a request to the back end the back end will listen to the uh, to the api request it'll send it back the results now we'll look into this much more detail uh when we start discussing about the fetch okay but abhi ke just remember that ha abdur we'll get to that little later we have the promise ka class this week but yeah so api is related to promise in a way you're correct but api is not a promise itself theek hai and sort of like i said i will discuss about apis in detail little bit later uh, not right now because Oh, see, Abhikul, just remember that using APIs is how you interact with the backend. Okay, we'll get to this a little bit later, but yeah. Huh, so the point here is: imagine that um, I am on this page. I go to this page, okay, and I make an API call. Now, when I'm making an API call, which means when I'm requesting something from the backend, what if there is, <clears throat> what if the response is taking some time to come back? नो जब तक वो रिस्पॉन्स नहीं आता है आई कांट फ्रीज माई एप्लीकेशन इमेजिन दैट आई हैव अ कोड लाइक दिस आई एम डूइंग सम लाइक कंसोल लॉग और समथिंग ओके एंड देन आई एम मेकिंग एन एपीआई मेकिंग एन एपीआई रिक्वेस्ट हियर मेक एन एपीआई रिक्वेस्ट एंड डू समथिंग एल्स लाइक दिस कंसोल लॉग बाय आई मे वांट टू चेंज द कलर ऑफ समथिंग लाइक डॉक्यूमेंट डॉट क्वेरी सेलेक्टर Yeah, let me increase the font. Taking it, okay. And you do some stuff here. Okay, let. If you observe, like uh, this code and this code and this code. Okay, we have these three codes. Now these three codes will not take that much of time to run, right? Like uh, these three lines will run instantly. But look at this code. See, we have not learned how to make an API call yet. We'll be learning that this week. but just think of it like there is some code uh, there is some code right here within which you're making an api request now this code obviously will take some time right because we have to make a request to the backend the backend has to look into the database backend has to respond you back to it so all of these things are not instantaneous okay this api request will not happen very instantly it will take some time basically theek hai Now, जब तक वो रिक्वेस्ट नहीं आता है इट डजेंट मेक सेंस टू वेट फॉर दिस एंड नॉट डू द रिमेनिंग थिंग्स राइट बिकॉज लेट्स से दिस टेक्स लाइक समल वेबसाइट लाइक दिस एंड वी हैव वन स्मॉल एड हियर ठीक है दिस इज द स्पेस वे एल बी शोइंग एन वन एड बेसिकली ओके but rest of the page has multiple other things which don't require any backend at all okay let's say we have all, all of these things theek okay? <clears> hai <throat> now this is the only uh, only component which requires to do an api call now rest of these things are all static images or text or whatever now jab tak ye wapas nahi i mean when, uh, jab tak ye api call is not completed we cannot wait for it right because it would mean that we'll have to uh, next stop rendering of all of these things but doesn't make sense so what we can do is <coughs> guys one second my throat is feeling one second uh, so what i was saying is imagine that you have website like this there are multiple images theek okay? hai but there's one spot like one area within a website which requires some data from the back end okay this might be to show some ad or something like that now <clears throat> imagine that you want to render this thing this thing this thing this thing and the ad also if we wait for the ad to actually fetch the data from the back end 
and then render it. We will have to actually wait for, I mean, uh, all of these things have to wait for this to complete. No? But that doesn't make any sense because why should these things wait for this API call to complete? These things don't depend on the API call. So these things should render separately. And this API call should happen in parallel. And once the data is returned, then we can render that. But thinking of JavaScript as a single threaded language, okay, we spoke about that being a single threaded language. What does this mean? JavaScript can do only one thing at a time. But if you think about this, so let's say we have A and this is B. This is C, this is D, this is the add E. Okay. Let's say that I write some code to render A and, and then to render B. And then I write some code to write some code to uh, like make an API call and fetch E. And then I render D. Uh, okay. So if you look at this, uh, like these things. Uh, this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing so these four things they basically don't take much time okay uh, these four things are instantaneous okay so somehow they'll render very soon but if you look at this third thing right here this third thing it actually is an api call okay, which means that it will go to the back end it'll take its own time to fetch the data and then come back but does that mean that while this is happening, should we wait for these both things? Why should these both things wait for this thing to complete? Because these both are basically, uh, they're independent of this API call, right? But then how will we solve this thing? Because JavaScript is a single threaded language, right? It means that it can do only one thing at a time. And if that is the case, how will we ever solve this problem? Okay. And that is where the concept of event loop comes in. Yeah. To explain this, I'm going to open up the JavaScript file that we have. So VS Code. And let's open up our DOM. Okay. So. Let's say that I had a console log of start and then I had a console log of uh, first and second at the end. Okay. Now, within our JavaScript engine here, okay, this is the JavaScript space. Okay, I'll say that, uh, let me create one more box here. Yeah, so this is a JavaScript engine right now. The JavaScript engine consists of many things. And one of those many things is nothing but our, uh, our call stack. Okay. Now this is our call stack. Now we discussed what a call stack is in the previous week. A call stack is a data structure, which is used to manage the multiple execution context, right? So we've already seen how the execution context are created and all of that. So, a call stack is simply used to manage or handle the multiple execution context, the creation and deletion. Okay. Which means that right now, uh, when you come across this line right here, when you come across this line right here, so how does it start? So we have a console log right here. This is a function call, right? When you have a function call, we simply add that function call on top of the call stack like this. Okay. Once we add to the call stack, once it is done, we remove it. And then we add this thing to the call stack. And once this is executed, we remove this as well. And then we add this to the call stack. And once this is executed, we remove uh, <coughs> this as well. And then we add this to the call stack ultimately. And once this is done, we remove this also. 
and finally the call stack is empty okay guys this thing is clear right how the call stack works okay now let's see what happens if let's say that uh beach me if i add one set timeout okay set timeout is basically used to run this callback after a specific delay let's give this a delay of let's say some uh, 5000 milliseconds which means after 5 seconds i want to run this callback right here okay that is the whole point of set timeout theek hai so a set timeout is basically a function which accepts a callback and a delay and this the set timeout ka function will run this callback after this much amount of milliseconds has passed which means that whatever callback we have right here this will run after these many seconds have passed theek okay? hai let's add a console log of after uh, as a inside set timeout now just think about one thing <clears throat> i told you that javascript is single threaded which means that uh, it can only do one thing at a time right and i also told that javascript is a synchronous language which means that once it finishes one line okay only then it goes on to the next line theek okay? hai all of this is because a javascript engine has only one call stack ठीक है इफ इट हैड मल्टीपल कॉल स्टैक्स ना वी कुड हैव रन मे बी दिस थिंग ऑन वन कॉल स्टैक दिस थिंग ऑन वन कॉल स्टैक दिस वन गॉट सो लाइक दैट बट बिकॉज़ जावास्क्रिप्ट इंजन हैज ओनली वन कॉल स्टैक वी अल्टीमेटली हैव टू रन वन कमांड आफ्टर द अदर विद इन द सेम कॉल स्टैक ओनली ठीक है राइट नाउ वी हैव दिस कंसोल लॉग ठीक है सो the way it works is and this console log is a simple statement we add this to the call stack here like this and once the execution is complete we simply remove this from the call stack now when we have a set timeout you now by the way guys see uh, whatever stuff is part of the javascript engine all of that comes from ecma script okay so there is this uh, big committee called as ecma international which actually maintains this huge document which is called as the ecma script okay so the ecma script basically contains of all the features that are part of javascript now i'm going to find uh, wait let me see go to the website here and uh, i think you have to go to ecma script here this one and i think publish and the hona chahiye yeah so this is the latest document and wait i'll yeah so this is the entire document basically it's still loading i guess Okay, so whatever you see right here within this page, so every single thing here, it basically describes the JavaScript programming language. Just I'll share with you, Ansari. I've shared the link. Okay, so whatever you see right here, that is part of the JavaScript programming language, which means you know there is a committee out there, okay, whose main duty is to maintain this document. Okay, now whatever JavaScript features. are mentioned within this document only they ultimately come inside the javascript programming language theek okay? hai which means that all your const and let and var and all the methods all the array and all the loops every single uh, every single syntax every single feature that you know in javascript actually comes from this documentation right here theek okay? hai so this javascript engine jo hai 
it basically will be able to understand and run whatever code whatever code there is if it is part of the ecmascript documentation theek hai but not everything that you write in javascript is actually part of ecmascript theek hai because there are a lot of things which are given by the browser i have to understand one thing right so or uh, see this javascript engine jo hai this is just one small part of the entire puzzle okay <clears throat> the bigger puzzle is is this actually theek hai now this is your entire browser okay so within your browser you have one part which is this javascript engine this javascript engine only understands whatever is part of this ecmascript specification here which means that if there is something which the uh, which is not part of this document okay which you write within your code here that part is not understood by javascript engine and one of those things is the set timeout so a set timeout is actually not part of the ecmascript specification at all in fact if i just do a search for this you'll see that i i do not find any results at all theek okay? hai so ecmask <coughs> yeah the ecmascript specification which is this documentation here this documentation doesn't contain anything related to set timeout because this documentation doesn't talk about it but then how are we able to still use it we are able to still use it because the browser itself has another part here now this is called as web apis what this means is whatever things are not part of the specification here but if we still want to use them within our javascript file they will be part of the web api now one of the things that is part of the web api is a set timeout web apis we have set timeout we have a set interval and in fact all your document uh, all your dom stuff okay so all of these things also are actually part of the web api theek hai see a web api is nothing but see uh, the browser itself is implementing these three methods theek okay? hai so whatever whatever code we write within our javascript file here and if that code like set time out if it is not part of the ecmascript specification which means that it will not be executed by the javascript engine it will be executed by the web api but ultimately because everything is running in the browser the browser ultimately executes it correctly so that's what basically happens so uh yahan par what happens is see first we start from here again we add console log it's a simple statement so this will be done uh, really quickly and we'll move the call stack again now when we come across this line right here theek hai so a set timeout like i told you it is not understood by javascript engine why because this javascript engine only looks at this documentation here as a source of truth lekin yahan par we don't have anything about set timeout and hence the javascript engine will not understand what to do with this in that case what happens is the set timeout will move to the web api this web api which is implemented by the browser itself and not the javascript engine this web api will now understand what to do with this theek hai the browser is simply tell the javascript engine okay uh, agar tumko nahi pata hai mujhe pata hai kya karna hai iske sath so it simply takes over the set timeout and what happens now is while this is happening we do not wait 
okay javascript right now does not mean because anyway the call stack is empty right because the call stack is empty we can simply go to the next line okay we add this to the call stack and this is done and then we come back here we add this to the call stack okay and this is done again and we come back here we add this to the call stack and this is also done now meanwhile what about this meanwhile this thing will wait for 5000 milliseconds which means for 5 seconds once the 5 seconds is complete whatever callback we have here theek hai this callback will not go directly into the engine guys now there is one more concept here call as the callback queue this is called as the callback queue now like the name suggests right whatever callback you have here after this much amount of time has passed we pull this out and we add that here theek hai and the web api will simply push whatever callback was there inside the callback queue uh sabhishek so see a set time out is not directly part of ecma script okay that's why it's not an official javascript feature but it is part of the browser itself so the browser implements the set time out not the javascript engine theek hai because the browser implements all of these three things whenever we write any code uh, related to any of these three things the web api actually takes over theek hai ya yeah, same thing with that also web api ka there is no specific link need to wo aapko sirf google karna padega because there is no one link for web api actually okay now yeah so once the web api and the timeout is complete once the delay is complete we add that to the callback queue theek hai and once we have this thing inside the callback queue now what happens is now this is where and the very important thing which is called as the event loop comes in the picture event loop is basically uh, a feature which has only one responsibility what the event loop does is it will look at the call stack and it look at the callback queue it will check if there is anything inside the callback queue now there is something inside the callback queue right now and only if the call stack is currently empty theek okay? hai only if the call stack is empty then the event loop will simply add this entire uh, entire callback to it it will add this to the actual call stack again now a call stack or a javascript engine it understands what to do with a simple function right it'll simply call it theek okay? hai let me explain it again so what uh, what basically happens is we have see uh, this is the overall architecture of of a browser theek okay? hai the browser basically contains the javascript engine which in turn contains the call stack there is a web api section where whatever is not understood or handled or managed by the javascript engine will be managed right here because this uh, this section right here is actually handled by the browser itself okay then we have a callback queue and we have an event loop as well so looking at this first of all we start from the top we start from console.log we add that here because this is a simple statement we execute this and we remove this from the call stack and then we come here and then we try to add this to the call stack here but remember that uh, <coughs> javascript engine 
does not understand the set timeout. Why? Because set timeout is not part of ECMA script at all. It's me hey nahi, right? That is why the JavaScript engine doesn't know what to do with the set timeout. And hence, it simply passes it on to the web API. Now, web API completely understands what to do with it. Okay? But meanwhile, once, once this thing is moved over from the call stack to this, the call stack is right now empty. And because the call stack is empty, we can simply move on. We can go to the next time it is this. We add that here. And once this is done, we remove this from the call stack as well. And then we come here, we go with this. Once this is done, we uh, we remove this also on the call stack. Then we come here, we go with this one, and we add this here. And once this is also done, we, fin uh, we remove this from the call stack again. And same thing with this also. Okay. Meanwhile, this is sitting right here. Okay. And once the five seconds has passed, until then, all of this would have completed, right? Like uh, this and this and this. All of these, they take, <clears throat> they finish in mere milliseconds. They finish like really quick. And after the five seconds have passed, the web API will simply transfer this call stack to the callback queue. Okay. Whatever callback is there, that is passed to the callback queue. Now the callback queue, it contains only one callback in its queue right now. Now it's up to the event loop to look at the callback queue and to check if anything is there and then push this callback to the call stack only if the call stack is empty. That is the uh, most important thing, guys, which means that if the call stack has any, uh, if the call stack has something else going on, then event loop will not push this yet. Okay. The event loop will only push this to the call stack only when the call stack is empty. And once this is pushed, right, whatever code is there here, that will simply execute. That's it. Avinay, <clears throat> they don't. Okay. So let's look at uh, <clears throat> based on this, guys. What is the order of console log statements? Like which one comes first? Which one comes next? Start first, second, end, and then. Insert about very good guys. So yeah, that is correct. So basically, and Abhishek is topic could be called as event loop. Okay. If you check, okay, let's go live with this first of all. And if we check uh, what the console is, let me refresh. Yeah, let me remove this. We don't need the breakpoints. Let me save. Okay. <clears throat> Observe. Let me first save Karunga. We have start first, second, end. After five seconds, we get inside set demo. That's it. Okay. Now, one thing what if we change this to zero? Okay. The question is what if we save this to zero? So, what happens in this case again? Let's try to understand what happens in this case. Okay. So, again, we start from this one. We start from console log, we add this here. Okay. And once this is done, we simply remove this from the call stack. And then we come here, we have this one. Now, when this gets added to the call stack, okay, does the JavaScript engine know what to do with this? It does not know because and the set timeout doesn't exist within within ECMAScript at all, right? So the engine does not know what to do with it. So what does it do? It simply passes this on to the web API like this. Okay. 
the web api understands what to do with this but meanwhile we simply don't wait for it to complete we we move on to the next one theek hai as once we push anything to the web api we don't wait for it we simply go to the next line we add that here once this is complete we remove from the call stack and then we add this here once this is complete bring from the call stack as well and same thing with this also when this is complete we remove this as well now once the call stack is empty now <clears throat> by the way meanwhile what would have happened meanwhile <clears throat> let me tell you one more actually let's start this from the beginning okay in a practical sense what would have happened is we'll start with this we add hoga and then we delete hoga because we're done with it and then we come here we yahan par add hoga okay and the engine doesn't know what to do with it so i'll simply move this on to the web api we meanwhile we add this yahan par lekin this has to just wait for 0 milliseconds which means there's nothing to wait only which means that the web api will simply push this thing copy kyun nahi aa raha will simply push this thing to the callback immediately because there is nothing to wait right when there is nothing to wait the web api will simply push this to the callback immediately but <clears throat> what is the main job of event loop the event loop will look at the callback queue it look at the call stack as well and event loop will add this to the call stack only when the call stack is empty right right now the call stack is not empty and hence the event loop will still not add this to the call stack it will still remain here and <clears throat> once this is done we remove this from the call stack but immediately we add this also Okay. And when this is done, ये भी हो जाएगा. And then we come here, we add this to the call stack. Once this is done, we remove this from the call stack as well. And finally, right now, uh, uh, event loop again has uh, one responsibility. It look at the call stack. It look at the callback queue. And only if the call stack is empty, we push this to the callback finally. and right now after everything else is finished we finally run this block of code and if you look at the result right now we still have the same result we have start first none of these things theek okay? hai which means that no matter what time you give the web api ka jo bhi stuff hai that will always run at the very end okay now one more thing we'll see what if we basically have a set time out of let's say of 2 seconds and seconds okay one second let's say let's see what happens in this case okay I uh, will start from here again. Yeah. Take a minute. Yes. So again, we start from here. We start from this line first. ठीक है, we add console log here, and once this is done, we remove this in the call stack, which means that we immediately run this console log of starter. ठीक है, so this will print immediately. Now we come to set time out here, and we try adding this to the call stack. Now the JavaScript engine doesn't know what to do with it, so what does it do? It simply pushes this to the web API. It'll come here. now meanwhile we have one more set time out which will come here 
now this again we uh, one second now we have one more set amount here now this is also set amount so the javascript engine will push this also to the web api here now in dono ka timer chalta rahega meanwhile we come to this one we add this thing here and once this is done we remove this which means that after this thing will print we print this thing immediately now once this both are done we come back here now between these two which one will complete first the one second wala once this is complete we add this to the queue theek hai at this point of time again the call stack is empty right which means the event loop will simply add this to the call stack and be done with it theek hai so uh, it'll print out this thing theek hai and then iska bhi 2 seconds ho jayega tab tak abhi iska bhi call uh, iska bhi jo call back hai that will be add to the call back queue like this once this is done we add this to the dast of engine and once this is done and we execute this as well so basically what happens is we run this first and then we run this and then we run this and finally we run this one ठीक है if you look at the result now so i'll save the file then we get this and then we get this make sense okay let's see what happens if we give same time to both of them i'll give one second i'll say first and second Let's see what happens in this case again. We start from here. Let's remove this. We start from here. We add this to the call stack, and we are done with it. We print this one, and then we add this to the call stack. And because it's set timeout, one second. We add this here, and we bring this here, and then it, then we come here immediately. We come. We add this here. Immediately we pull this here. Now. both of them have the same time okay which means that both of them will be add to the call back queue but because this was added first this will be added first here like this uske baad ye add hoga like <clears throat> like this meanwhile what will happen we'll add this to the call back uh, to the call stack and we'll print this we'll remove this from the call stack now finally the call stack is empty when the call stack is empty we have the call back queue and call back queue mein kya hai whatever was added first we add that to the call stack first once this is done this will come first in the queue and it execute hoga or it delete ho jayega now again the call stack is empty now when the call stack is empty again event loop will look at the call back queue it look at the call stack once the call stack is empty this event loop will simply push this to the call stack this should be second sorry actually this should be second like this if you look at the result right now we have uh, first and second that's it Now I'm going to ask you as a question. Okay, let's see if you guys can answer it. Let's say that I have some code like this. I have console log of start, and I have a while. Uh, or let's say that I have a very big for loop. The i is equal to uh, zero. I less than the semicolon. I less than like very big number. I plus plus. I'll do nothing here. I'll just maybe just do nothing. This thing is fine, and then I'll do a set timeout. I'll do console dot log. 
inside set timeout and this will happen very immediately or oh, wait i'll remove this for now let console log of end okay guys so what will be the order of console logs right now perfect guys so it will be start end it's a very very good so you guys have understood what uh, what the basics of this is <clears throat> let's say one more thing let's say that i have a for loop like this okay now my question is will this run uh, will this thing run even if this thing is not completed yet after all js it comes under rec mask so and you guys are right so what happens in this case guys is we start from here okay and uh let's remove all of this start from here i add this to the console add the call stack and this is done we remove from call stack so this will print immediately and then we come across this like this and because the set time out we push this to the web api but because this has a delay of 0 this thing will be pushed to the callback immediately like very quickly basically okay, the reason being there is no delay at all so this will go off from web api it will be here but meanwhile our for loop will start here now this is a very long for loop right now what happens is the event loop will not push this to the uh, push to the call stack unless the call stack is empty like it will take a lot of time for the call stack to be to be empty because this for loop here will have to run these many iterations basically okay so once these many iterations are done only then the call stack will get empty but then again we have this console log of end We'll have to add this here. Once this is also done, we remove this, and finally, when the call stack is empty, then we add this to the call stack, and whatever is there inside the callback that will run. Three nine yes, especially stuff like set timeout and set interval. Those things will always run at the very end. when i know there is no uh, <clears throat> that can't happen when i abdur so set time out will definitely be accurate will tell you why because most of your other code that you have within ha huh, in this case it won't be accurate you're right Abdul is absolutely right. In this case, it won't be accurate because this thing is basically blocking the main call stack. So, जब तक the main call stack uh, is blocked, right? We cannot execute whatever is there inside the call stack because the for loop जो है वो run होता रहेगा, ठीक है? And only once the for loop is complete, the call stack will be empty. and only when it is empty the event loop can finally push this to the javascript engine the call stack and thene uh, see it's not like everything will take time uh, there are certain things to the dom uh, the dom stuff like i spoke about dom right in this case dom will not take time theek hai just that all the dom ka methods jo bhi hai they are handled by the web api not the javascript engine theek okay? hai because javascript engine doesn't know how to deal with the dom apis which is document dot query selector all of those things the javascript engine has no idea about them but the web uh, but the web apis have the idea about them and only they ultimately execute uh, whatever dom stuff you write about
and vinay no uh, good question vinay but uh, the timing will start within web api only abhishek you are right uh, web apis are inbuilt for every browser uh there are many of them abhishek so i've listed some of them here so set mode is one of them and set interval and dom there's one more thing called as uh, navigator okay this thing you don't need to learn now like in there are certain websites which ask for your uh, location access na to us location access ko karne ke liye bhi you have to use a navigator object for that akshit so all the dom methods are part of web api every single thing and guys uh, remember one thing see uh, just because something is part of the web api it doesn't mean that it will uh, run later theek hai just that uh, like stuff like your navigator or dom so these two things they are simply handled by the web api okay dom ka methods run whenever when it's supposed to run that's it and abhishek it's not actually possible to access location without permission aapko permission dena hi padega Akshit, what I'm saying is, see, uh, not everything which is part of the document object, I mean, not everything which is part of the web API will have to run last. Okay? I mean, if you look at the DOM methods, right? So DOM methods will run immediately, right? But DOM is not part of the JavaScript engine. DOM is part of the web API. But just because something is part of the web API, it doesn't mean it has to run at the very end. Okay? There are certain and certain methods like set time out and set interval and later on we learn about something called as a promises so these three things mainly okay yeah, so these three, uh, these three things mainly uh, they run at the very end okay but everything else like your dom ka methods they are part of the web api but they don't go through this entire thing they don't go through the callback queue and even to one of those things they just it is run uh, there is run in parallel just think of that like let's say that you have a document uh, dot create element or whatever okay this thing is not handled here this will be handled by web api only the web api will handle document or create element but this thing will happen in parallel it will simply not block the call stack this thing will happen in parallel basically that's it theek okay, hai so whatever dom methods you have they will happen immediately but they happen in parallel because they are not part of the javascript engine and tanzila yes local storage also is part of web api correct we have local storage as well <clears throat> guys my suggestion would be uh, don't get confused by like these things isko chhod do isko chhod do isko chhod do abhi ke liye theek hai when anybody ask you any questions about uh, about about event loop they mainly focus on these three things we have not learned about promises yet wo baad mein aayega but the point here is your set time out and set interval and promises these three are mainly asked whenever they ask questions about event loop theek hai just remember that whenever you have any code which 
basically happens because of set time or a certain interval of promises they go to the entire circle they start from the call stack they go to the web api they become part of the callback queue and once the call stack is empty then we finally push this to the javascript engine or the call stack okay okay cool um And guys, I'll just tell you like what the Keshav uh, sir, if set time out callback function could last me execute, करते हैं तो callback function को directly भी तो call कर सकते हैं last में. हाँ Keshav, but how will you know कि अब इस set time out का main purpose क्या है? That you want to do something after a specific amount of time. ठीक है? अगर तुम वो कॉल बैक को लास्ट में कॉल करोगे तो व्हाट इज द गारंटी दैट इट विल एग्जीक्यूट आफ्टर द डिले नो गारंटी ना लेकिन सेट टाइम आउट कैन ऑलमोस्ट गिव यू अ गारंटी दैट इट विल हैपन आफ्टर द टाइम आफ्टर द डिले ओके बट या देयर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी दैट इफ यू ऐड सम वेरी इडियोटिक कोड लाइक दिस Which will block the call stack. If the call stack is blocked, that case your set time out cannot happen at the right time. It will delay. But most of the times, what happens is you have normal. You have normal code here, which executes very quickly. Okay, so uh, after the set time out, whatever is there, that actually happens very quickly. Okay, and once everything is complete, once the call stack is empty, that is when. we finally execute this call uh, this call back within the call stack guys make sense any questions Uh, Abdul, not exactly. That's a different thing altogether. So, I'm slightly complex as well. But anyway, guys, uh, <clears throat> guys, is it okay if we stop the class here today because I'm feeling again a little weak? And from tomorrow, I'll make sure that I take the entire two hours. i'm still feeling little weak and i feel like i want to take some a uh, rest i'm all the yeah so i shared the code and there's not much code to share anyway uh i'm really sorry guys uh i'll make sure that from tomorrow we have the entire class i'll make sure of that and i'll tell you what else is left uh, this week the topics are basically we have uh, we have regarding closures next we have async javascript which is basically all about callbacks and uh, promises and async await and through this we also uh, talk about the fetch api think okay, a very important after this uh yeah the project that's it we have these things to finish the script and i feel we'll mostly finish these three things this week okay so probably next week sir we'll be starting off react okay okay and thanks everyone thanks for understanding i'll talk to you tomorrow and i'll make sure that from tomorrow we take the entire class okay thanks everyone uh bye bye take care and guys you all can drop off thank you <coughs>